Hello, this is going to be a short mid-month video uh, to talk about a little bit of what I've been reading. It's about 100 degrees here every day, so I'm not going to do it outside. I get up early in the morning, uh, which would be a good time to walk and try and find a place to do videos, but I like to spend that time writing. If I don't write the first thing in, in the morning, I end up not doing it most days. I'm going to clear my throat here. Uh, not that much better. Anyway, um, but I did read a couple things this week. I Hardly anything. Uh, but I figured I should make a video. I, I remembered this morning that I had a YouTube channel, so uh, I'll give it a shot. I read, uh, I suppose I'm sort of participating in Rocket Summer because I did read Frankenstein. Uh, and I talked about that in my last video. And the prompts for Rocket Summer are a book from the 30s or earlier. Frankenstein counts for that. A book from the 40s. Uh, and then, uh, so that was this most recent week. And then a book from the 50s next week. And a book from the 60s the week after that. And I did read two uh, collections from the that have st stories from the 30s and 40s and later in them. But the best of C.L. Moore... Catherine Moore, who wrote uh, science fiction and fantasy. She wrote like Planet Stories early on. She, her first big character was a guy named Northwest Smith, who I'm sure uh, Spielberg and Lucas have heard of, who's kind of an adventurer, um, treasure hunter guy, who... Uh, but they're but they're planetary stories. They're set in the future. That's kind of like a, you know, kind of like a, you know, all the planet, a very a very pulp kind of uh, planetary future where with you know Venus is a jungle planet and Mars is a desert planet and that kind of thing. And and she had another uh, sword and sorcery character set in the in medieval France and those stories were great by her the early ones of those that she did then she married this guy and she married Henry Kuttner and I read his book too they're famous as a team in science fiction they wrote a lot of stories under the combined pen name of Lewis Paget they once they got married they they would work on each other's stories a lot too sometimes it's really unclear to to say who wrote what i didn't like his stories as much now look at the title of this the best of seal moore and henry cutner best of seal moore you can kind of see from the design that they're from the same publisher so i thought when i had this and then i bought this this would be stories they wrote together or it'd be different stories but no this the first half of this book is the exact same text as that other book um, so i didn't need to buy them both i just needed to buy this one but it's still can i'm still counting it as two books because i did read because i'm getting two books off my list here so his stories and the and the story she wrote with him later on there's a lot of uh there's sort of more comic stories there science fiction but there's a lot of time travel it's a lot of people coming from the future and um, acting goofy in the present and uh, or 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 aliens coming to earth and acting goofy either so they're kind of accessible to people who do, don't read a lot of hard science fiction or anything like that but i really his stories really did feel kind of dated to me so i liked her early stories before they started working together a lot better and that's what I read for, for fi that's all the fiction I read this week. Then on Kindle Unlimited, I read this book. This is a guy I watch on YouTube sometimes. He's, uh, and his virtually native, um, Vladimir Skendroff, he's basically the, you know, follows the same kind of theories I've been following with language studying, but he's really more focused on reading. He really thinks you should spend all your time reading. Interesting perspective, um, you know, written in English by a guy who is from, uh, who didn't speak any language but but Bulgarian till his late 20s and now writes in English. So it's definitely speaks well of his, uh, 
I don't know if you could hear that. There's the walls here are very thin. It's like people are in the room with you, but <clears throat> whatever. I only got two more weeks here in this in this spot, and I'm moving across town. I finished this one. I think I talked about that already. And was there anything else? There's a couple. There was two writing books I read. I'm reading a lot of writing books because I'm, I'm probably going to start a class, an online course, in August, early August. That runs six weeks. That scene writing course. Um, no, no real de details yet. I'm, I'm having an online, uh, a Zoom meeting with the director of it next week to see if it's a good fit but i'm pretty sure it is i've read a lot of books by these people who run these courses uh one of them which i read this week was uh, it's called the story grid by sean coin i don't know if i have a um it's kind of a dull dull cover anyway it's probably not worth looking at it's just like a big graph on the cover and um oh here's the cl moore book Okay, so her, her, my, I think her best story is this one, and this is kind of a bummer, Chamblot, it's really, really good, it's the Northwest Smith story, it's also the first story she ever published, it was published in World Tales, Weird Tales, so it's kind of a bummer when a person's most entertaining best story is the very first thing they ever wrote, and then Black Thirst, Black God's Kiss is another good one, I'm jumping around a lot here because I thought I'd already done was done talking about that stuff, but let me see if I can find that, John. Oh, I'm re I read this book, too. Ah, it's by Robert McKee. I got this one from the library. It's about scene structure. Um, it's He's mostly a screenwriter, writing teacher, but his stuff is really ap applicable, applicable to all kinds of fiction writing, any kind of storytelling. So obviously you can see him spending a lot of time thinking about writing. It's probably what I'm spending most of my time doing now. I really want to do more writing. And if I've been doing a lot, which is cutting into my YouTube time, but whatever. You know, I downloaded a bunch of stuff, a bunch of uh, Kindle Unlimited stories that... Uh, I can't find Sean Coyne's book, Story Grid. That I'm going to have to lose if I, if I don't get to them all before I have to cancel my... Kindle Unlimited if I don't get to 70 books. Um, but then I thought, well, it's not that big a deal if I don't get to 70 before the end of my trial. I had said before that I, I want to get to 100 books read on my device before I spend any money on books. So I could just cancel at the end of the free trial, and then, you know, if it takes me a couple more weeks or months to, uh, to um, there it is. Oh disappeared again where is my cover if it takes me a couple months to just the story just the story structure book I really like story structure um, if it takes me a couple months to really to finish my hundred books challenge then I can always restart Kindle Unlimited anytime you know as a paid subscription because they don't they don't make you uh, they don't threaten you in any way. They'll take your business back whenever you want. Anytime you quit, you can go back. You can't get another free trial every time you go back, but you could quit every other month and they'll always take you back. It's like Amazon Prime that way. So, uh, apropos of all that stuff, I've got, um, for this coming week, I've got a Robert Silverberg book from 1958. I'm going to see if I can find the name of it. Probably not. That was, uh, um, it's, see, it always does this because I see the cover, then it, before I can get the screen up, it, it jumps to the beginning of the book. Um, this is a, a book that, according to the note, uh, um, Silverberg puts on the front of the book he's not particularly proud of but he's like well it's an early book by me and it's good that people can read it so I thought I'd do that for my 50s book because I already have it and it's only, only like 120 pages or something and then I want to read hopefully I can get to it this week it's Pride and Prejudice I know there's a Jane Austen event going on Austin July I guess 
but they're reading a different book. I think they're reading. Uh, I don't. I don't. I won't even say one of the others. But I'm going to read Pride and Prejudice because it's a book that um, is talked about in the Sean Coyne and one of those writing books talks about a lot. And I wanted to read it. We re read it for a while. I think it'll come up in that story class that I'm that I'm probably going to start in August. So. Hopefully I'll still have time for Garb August. I'm planning on it. Um, yeah, that's it. Okay. I hope you're all well. I hope to do more videos in the future, but I'm not going to promise anything. And we'll talk later.